the special partner session talking about the important relationship between OEMs and suppliers. Our speakers are Richard Chung, Executive Program Product Manager Innovation Design Business Strategy at Toyota Boshoku. And Gwen Penaran, who is a pinch hitter, he's standing in for one of his colleagues. He is the chief designer at Icona, Icona Design Shanghai. <laughs> and the moderator for this session is Abel Sampson, the publisher of Car Design News. Over to you, Abel. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, we've had, um, as Shiro said, the disorganized session, which I thought was quite organized. This one, we're hoping we're going to bring it back a bit and become a little bit more professional. Mm -hmm. I will invite nobody from the audience to come up. We've taken away the chair. You're all safe. Um, so I'd like to start by uh, letting Richard start his presentation. Sure. Um, if you'd okay. like to start, Richard. Okay, thank you. Actually, I'm a fan of a Forza, but uh, after seeing Yamauchi-san's presentation, I might convert to Gran Turismo. <laughs> So uh, uh, thank you. Um, my presentation is on really um, our what we are presenting at the Tokyo Motor Show starting tomorrow, and the project is called MX191. Um, this is actually the first time Toyota Boshoku is doing a full sort of full-fledged um, uh, concept uh, presentation. MX stands for Mobility Experience, uh, 2019 number one concept. So that's what 191 stands for. Uh, and as you know, the autonomous era is coming and it's going to change a lot of what's going to happen in the vehicle. So I think this is, you know, I think we all know this uh, by heart. And um, to deliver uh, what the future consumer is going to expect, uh, you know, we can't do it by ourselves. Although Toyota Boshoku is uh, uh, aiming to be an interior space creator but we need to have more than just our own internal technology. So we have actually, for the first time in history, uh, relied upon our Toyota Group uh, companies. So you, as you see here, Aishin, Denso, Toyota Gosei, and Toyota Toka Rika, uh, to help us to deliver the technology that is needed to deliver what we think is needed for the future of autonomous interior. So this is actually a very uh, interesting and uh, uh, fantastic way for us to work together and understand the possibility of what we need to do for the future. So our basic design principle is we start from our vision, which is the quality of time and space. And from there, we build up our uh, uh, storyline, if you will, starting with the why. And so it's more comfort, more safety, more enjoyment. And to deliver that, we needed to have six holistic systems um, not just one single technology, but actually a comprise of various uh, technologies together to form a six system. So we have over four, 45 innovations that are comprised, uh, packaged into the vehicle, but forming the six system. So you'll see that a little bit later. So our main theme for the, the vehicle is simple to understand. It's a concierge in car. Uh, so a concierge sounds more like a you know, hotel concierge where you have to ask something, but it's really more in the context of a butler. So a butler who knows what you need, what you need, but deliver that before you need it. So actually, you know, you really don't have to uh, provide a lot of input to the car because it senses and understands what you need. And that's the fully, pretty much the full concept of the vehicle. There we go, and then we'll skip through that. So the design approach uh, for this one is that we have a harmonious contrast. And what that means is that in the front of the vehicle, we have more of a business zone for the driver, right? And, and when the driver is uh, liberated from driving, he's now uh, in, a, in a zone where he needs to convert that time uh, to do his work or relax, or what have you. And then in the rear half of the vehicle is more for uh, relaxing, having, you know, enjoying the space with the family or friends. Uh, so then we have two interesting or two contrasting uh, purposes within the same vehicle. So even that crossing of that two elements, we've uh, introduced that into the interior theme. So even in the plan view, you see that two contrasting floor, 
again, introduce, you know, to allow the driver to do more in his uh, area, and then the rest of the uh, cabin is for family or friends to enjoy the time together. And then in between is where you communicate uh, with the driver and the, the rest of the, the occupants. So the first uh, system that I want to introduce, and I'm not going to introduce all six, uh, is the pre-boarding system. And um, this is kind of going back to what I was saying before. The car is preparing for you as you leave the desk from your uh, current location, which is house or office. You uh, instruct, basically you press the button to saying, okay, here's where I want to go. The car understands that and then it starts to prepare in the cabin, the temperature, the air clean, the, uh, the, the um, uh, sanitization, all that. Uh, is prepared. So by the time you come to your car, the, uh, the uh, e-glass uh, turns off and becomes uh, transparent uh, to, to com you know, keep the temperature low during the summer. And then the seat rotates, obviously, to welcome you into the vehicle. And then once you're in the uh, vehicle, I think the video should play. Well, can you go back? Okay, uh, I'm going to go back. Uh, the seatbelt, uh, and then of course, we, you know, we didn't want to emphasize on, uh, sorry, that's my mistake. <laughs> we didn't want to emphasize on the, the silver age, but it is a problem that is coming up in, in, in Japan, especially uh, Japan being the, the most uh, highest uh, average. Okay, I'm going to skip through that. But basically, the seatbelt is presented to you, so it's actually you can reach the seatbelt easier, and the buckle comes up, and you can clip it. Uh, at a, a much convenient uh, way to do it. And then once you liberate yourself from uh, driving by uh, activating the auto drive, uh, you're going to, of course, uh, you know, the driver kicks back and uh, have more space around him as you retract back and the steering wheel goes forward. And the second system I want to introduce is the occupant protection uh, safety system. Because you know, we have a flat floor and a long rail and uh, the seat can go pretty much the whole length of the cabin, uh, then you need to have more holistic safety system equipped with the front seat. So we have the fully integrated seat belt uh, along with uh, three airbags. So you have an inside and far side airbag as well as a lap belt uh, airbag. So then you're fully in uh, enclosed within the safety system wherever your seat is located. And also, the seat has an individualized um, AC system so that um, you know, if you try to heat up or cool down the entire cabin, it takes up a lot of energy. Uh, in our solution, because you're individually cooling or heating the seat, uh, you're saving up to maybe 30% of the energy uh, consumed. So it's actually uh, much more uh, effective uh, when it comes to uh, managing energy in, in EV. And of course, because you're moving away from the instrument panel and door, uh, you need to have controls at your fingertips. So by having the, uh, the control panels and the, the touch panel uh, right at the fingertip from the armrest, uh, it's easier to manipulate all the functions required. And then two more systems I want to introduce um, is control for comfort and uh, uh, driver uh, management. And uh, so each seat is equipped with uh, um, all haptic vibration, uh, sound and even aroma, uh, so that if a driver feels, uh, you know, while he's driving, uh, that dozy, uh, then, then, then the system wakes you up through natural ways of, you know, either vibration or playing the uh, favorite song or uh, through aroma and so forth, so that um, uh, you stay alert when you're driving manually. So we have up to six different modes that we can configure using the, the seat system. And so really, it, it offers flexibility of how you use that confined space into the, the, the different purposes. So you know, one uh, scenario would be family situation. We have a family of three, let's say, um, and uh, the sub passenger seat rotates, and the driver's seat basically still has to face forward uh, because it's, it's a level three autonomous. Uh, so you need to reach the to the steering wheel when, when it's needed in, in the emergency case. Um, so then, uh, but then having the three persons uh, seating in a sort of skewed way allows that full uh, legroom uh, arrangement. So uh, what we have is a uh, interior that is um, tailored to your needs and understand your needs. And so it's actually looking after the space to look after the uh, occupants. 
So we call this, obviously, uh, quality of time and space. Um, and we are located in the uh, South Hall, uh, level two. So please come and see us, and uh, you'll experience our, um, our product. And, and, and we, we call it a concept, but it's really not a concept in the context that it's really ready to be deployed in, in less than five years. So these are all technologies uh, from our uh, Toyota group uh, that is ready for the next generation of vehicles. So um, it is a uh, uh, lot closer to the reality than you think. So with that, uh, I want to thank you for your attention. So we'll swiftly move on to Gwen, and then we'll do some questions at the end. Yes, so. OK. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gonel Penara, design the, uh, chief designer at Icona. So I have the pleasure to show you the company this afternoon. So, so what is Icona? Icona is a, a global uh, design house, uh, which is uh, 10 years old now, created in 2010. Um, Basically, we focus on the, the design approach and uh, we try to keep a close relationship with our, our client. Uh, Icona today is about uh, 80 designers, 21 nationalities, and spread into three uh, studios. So the founders are Gaudio, uh, Gigi Gaudio, which has 40 years of experience uh, mainly in the car design industry. Uh, he's, um, he was the CEO of Bertone before. This is where basically the idea comes from to establish a design studio in Italy and uh, in Shanghai. And he was previously also CEO of Aprilia. Uh, Samuel Shufa, which is the design director, who had uh, eight years of experience with Nissan before and also previously with uh, Land Rover. Technocat Pogetti, which is one of our partners and basically the, the engineering team uh, with, uh, with who we developed many, many projects, essentially for China. So there are about 200 people, uh, all engineers, they do uh, different type of activities. They work also for Maserati, Ferrari, and name them, there are a lot. And Checom, which is uh, the model uh, maker, uh, with who we develop also many show cars and running prototypes. So what is the approach of Icona? Icona uh, try to keep a close relationship with the clients. We try to provide the best uh, creative work for, uh, for our partners. We have uh, many designers also which are integrated right now directly with clients. So we try to establish a certain communication and we try to work more as a design studio and uh, as a satellite studio. So these are few of our clients uh, after 10 years. Um, so the headquarters in Turin, uh, in, uh, based in the, exactly in the center of Turin, in Santa Maria. We have uh, 10 designers there. Shanghai Studio, which is the biggest studio, we are uh, 60 designers. We are in Pudong, which is the new part of, uh, of Shanghai, which is the hub of the economical uh, center. And we have Los Angeles, uh, just below uh, in Irvine, so close to, the, to Nissan, Hyundai, Kia, and few others. So I will show you a representative panel on uh, our work. So Nucleus, which is one of our last uh, show cars which is an autonomous driving car, which was one of the, the first one to be with this kind of architecture, uh, kind of monolithic um, vehicle, uh, created around uh, the idea of a living room, basically the transition between the airport and, um, and um, the hotel. So as you can see, the, 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 the language is quite fluid. It was, the idea was more to have a kind of fish, something extremely uh, sweet and, and dynamic. 
The interior participate also to this kind of approach uh, with something uh, totally uh, autonomous driving without any steering wheel, more really like a kind of uh, living room. So this, this car had two prices, uh, the Panda Doro in Shanghai and uh, the German price uh, recently. Well, a few images uh, in, in uh, Turin. Vulcano was actually more a kind of sculpture, uh, sex and wheels, let's say. Uh, pure, um, uh, a kind of work on what could be a new type of, um, of language, a new expression of the language. So, uh, as a reference, we can, can name actually Zahadid and many other architects who influence a lot the team. Uh, on this prototype, we developed actually uh, a titanium car, uh, which is a running prototype that we uh, finished with Chekom in 2017. Voilà, we worked on it with Arias for the, for the trim. Inside, this car is still presented actually in Turin. An overview of the interior. Fuselage was our first show car, was basically uh, um, a sporty sedan, a kind of new architecture on what could be the modern sedan four-seater, uh, very influenced by the Lamborghini Marzal, uh, also very influenced by some uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So a lot of influences in this car. Uh, like I said, uh, the HSR also Mitsubishi actually was a big part of the influence. Uh, the uh, SR71 Blackbird also was actually regarding this fuselage who gave also the name of the, of the, of the concept. Um, the, the, the target was already at the time actually to do a running prototype, things that we started, but for a question of cost actually we never uh, succeeded. Well, a few images of the, the volume and the, the sculpting was actually more about purely uh, a piece of architecture than more just a beautiful volume. Uh, the interior also, uh, with this kind of duality uh, between uh, the upper part, which is again the heritage of the jet fighter, and uh, the Japanese uh, garden for, 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 the, for the carpet, and uh, this idea of the chaise longue, so this duality between the comfort and the, the, the extreme dynamism. Neo was uh, actually a, a big um, a big step in our in our company. Uh, Neo was more a question on the, the young couple mainly in China. He was at the at the beginning um, a signature of the town. We started as uh, the signature. What could be the signature of Shanghai, but regarding a vehicle. And we arrived to um, the idea of what could be really the ideal car for the young generation of Chinese. And uh, knowing the fact that actually the Chinese are extremely connected, uh, at the time also they were um, the one single child, uh, we, f we thought about the proportion, the ideal proportion of, of the car. And we arrived to a car which is around 3 meters, 3 meters 20. Basically, the small size for, for, for a car in, uh, in China. And we developed this language, actually, it was totally, uh, completely appropriated for the young, the young generation of Chinese. And we arrived to this, to this solution. We influenced, uh, actually, quite, quite a lot of suppliers, uh, li like uh, what we have seen uh, recently. Well, uh, these are a few images of the development. The interior was also totally asymmetrical with uh, the two, uh, sw two, two side doors on one side giving a certain perspective to get in with the same uh, language and with, with twisted surfaces that we, we, we explore. 
Voilà, the car has been presented in 2015 at the Shanghai Motor Show. Thank you. I would like to present also, we have another film uh, with some work some, uh, uh, that we presented for some client recently. So uh, we'll, we can eventually show this now. Well, a robot for JDX that we just finished that we presented at the Shanghai Motor Show at the beginning of the year. This was also for JD, another robot, a personal assistant. Music obviously the doesn't work. A piano that we presented uh, last year uh, for an American client. Well, this nucleus was a part of the animation. The four four show cars uh, did by uh, Icona. Voilà, thank you. Excellent. <laughs> Can I have five minutes on the clock? Um, so we'll try and ask a few questions. Um, Richard, you talked about the collaboration of um, the different groups. Mm -hmm. But collaboration is quite a big word in automotive yeah, at the moment. Is, yeah. um, within an organization, or in Paris's case, you know, working with Clarion as well and um, pushing it. Mm -hmm. But what about with the OEMs? How are you finding collaboration at the moment? Is it changed over recent times? Um, no, it, actually, it's, gonna, it's increasing e even more. Um, you know, for our company, 95% of our business is Toyota. So, the, I mean, we, our bond between Toyota and us is, is very, very solid or strong. Uh, but in a way, as Toyota is you know, moving, as you see in Simon's presentation, uh, making that transition into the, the next big phase, um, f, you know, uh, with the dis disruption coming, uh, we are also preparing for the same thing, to obviously to meet Toyota's expectation. And, uh, and, and really, it's what the consumers are expecting. Uh, so we're um, not only, you know, be, being cognizant of uh, consumers in Japan, but globally. So, you know, what do the consumers in, in global locations like China, America, Europe, and so forth? Um, and so, so we, we do our part in understanding what that means from an interior context and uh, what uh, features and functions we need to deliver to meet their future lifestyle expectations. Okay. And Gwen, in regards to um, having studios around the world, and you talked about a lot of your cars were in China, yeah. for China. Are we going to see those cars um, in other motor shows? Are you looking at expanding the studio outside of China? Absolutely. We have already actually some, uh, some, some projects in America and, uh, and Italy uh, that we are developing directly with partners and, and the clients. So uh, we have already, already these studios are autonomous and actually we are developing also things with them more and more actually. We have also integrated designers directly with the clients. So actually, yes, we, we are more and more actually the studios will become independent and will develop their own, uh, their own vehicles like uh, production and, uh, and show cars. Okay, we've seen a trend. Um, one thing we noticed at um, Frankfurt, although the show was smaller, but it was still this focus on interiors and especially the, um, the lounge seating sort of approach in mm -hmm. the Hyundai cars. Mm -hmm. We'd seen it in the Aston Martin previously as well. Um, do you think that this is going to become a trend? Do you think the seats are going to change? You showed sure. examples of it, um, both in the Nucleus as well. There was a, a different sort of approach to it, mm -hmm. what the environment should be. Can you both give us what uh, you sure. think as supplies of 
how you think it's going to work? Well, I think what we are seeing is the convergence of a mobility, and I think Simon also addressed that too this morning, is that there's really the, it's a blurring line between automotive and other models of transportation. Uh, basically, consumers want to get from A to B uh, in the most painless and fastest way possible, but also if they have to take the time, they want to redeem the time in doing what they want to do. So driving the vehicle, unfortunately, uh, is becoming less and less important or relevant to them, uh, although for, for us motorheads, it's, it's kind of sad to hear that, but th that's what's happening. So to, to that extent, I think where the consumer sits um, is going to be sort of center of where the action is going to be. So then the, all the, the features and functions have to you know, be packaged around that occupant or you know, the passenger uh, sits, sort of like a business class seat in an airplane. Um, so we see that more and more happening. Uh, so whether it's a vehicle in a car or whether it's a, you know, a even uh, Uber Elevate uh, type of vehicle, um, I think that a lot of things has to really packaged around what consumer needs and what, where, the, where the consumer sits. Okay. And yeah. As you know, the designer always wants to go very fast, actually, and sometimes too fast. So they are there basically to provide ideas and to provide uh, solutions. But uh, we see that the market doesn't follow, actually. Already, if you, it was the big boom a few, few, few months ago, or one or two years ago, we are talking about autonomous car. And we see that we'll have to wait quite a lot of time, actually, before to see them on the street. So between the fantasy of the designer and the reality, sometimes there's actually some big step. It will happen for sure when uh, basically nobody knows exactly. And we know also that it depends on the technique, it depends on the law, it depends on many things. And uh, the, the infrastructure is still not completely ready. So it, it, will, it will happen, but not as fast as the designer wants. That's, okay. that's for sure. Excellent. Do we have any questions from the audience before we close the session? Okay, I've got one more question. You didn't touch on the environment. The environment is actually quite a big part of mm -hmm. the move forward, and it's been touched on by a few speakers. As a, um, a design house, as a, a supplier to Toyota, how important is that it, to you, the environment, eco-design, the material choice, and how much influence do you have on a car maker's decision-making process? I think it's quite a bit. Um, I, I think, it, it's, again, it starts from the consumers. And, and I think many of you may be aware that uh, you know, the name Greta Thunberg, a uh, 16-year-old Swedish girl who, who started the whole sort of uh, uh, green um, or you know, uh, global warming strike at, from a school, you know, teenagers uh, striking from school. And that, I think, is not just a phenomenon. I think this is something that's reflecting in our society where more and more people are now becoming aware and what they call, you know, we're, we got really eight, eight hours before the, the doomsday, so to speak. Um, so we as designers and we as in the industry, in automotive, have to be a lot more, I think, sensitive and, in fact, you know, not, re not reducing the greenhouse, but, in fact, you know, contributing in redu reducing it even further or even uh, going the other way. So uh, we're, we're at Toyota Bosch we're now uh, thinking quite a bit about how, how do we do that from a you know, raw materials point of view, from a, a manufacturing point of view, and then also you know, from an en energy consumption point of view. So try to give um, uh, the, the users better experience, but also uh, knowing that this is actually contributing to uh, saving, saving the environment. Okay. And Gwen? Um, uh, it's an interesting question, actually. We, we, we notice that actually when you build a car, it doesn't matter if the, the car is hydrogen or electrical or petrol engine car, it costs the same price to produce it. And basically, uh, the big question is how to reduce basically this, this kind of global warming. There is no perfect solution. We, we, in the past, I remember the Traban, for example, the, the, the body was in cotton. It was indestructible. We had problem basically to destroy the bodies of these of his cars. So th th there are solutions which are easier than, than others, for sure, but there is no perfect solution. Uh, we know that an electrical car pollutes as much as a petrol engine car. So uh, the, 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 the solution is probably to produce probably less, 
uh, better, uh, to recycle more, to find some alternatives, but probably not to say, for example, the electrical car or the hydrogen car will be the solution for the future because it doesn't make sense. So, but some solution will arrive every day, basically, there are some patterns and we find solutions, basically, to produce better. Uh, but again, I think the solution will be maybe to produce maybe a little bit less. Yeah. And uh, at the end, which is sad because we always want to produce more cars, but uh, in any case, at one point, the, the limit will basically stop the, the, yeah. the, the process. I, I like your approach because it was very similar to what Shenzhen said. There must be a, a balancing of the books, if you like. Absolutely. Where yeah. We must realize that we cannot continue on this growth yeah. way of um, electric cars. I'd like to thank the speakers. I'd especially like to thank Gwen because he stepped in for Samuel. His microphone fell off. His video didn't work as smoothly as he can, and he still did an amazing job. So thank you, Richard, and thank you, Gwen, for a great session. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'd just like a quick uh, photo opportunity oh, sure. for three gentlemen on stage, please.